As some of you may or may not know, when I started this channel as a little 12 year old boy, I was at the time an aspiring gaming YouTuber. That has changed clearly, but I'll never lose that part of me. And recently, I was channeling that little 12 year old me as I was digging through my box of old PS2 games when I came across what I thought was one of the coolest games when it came out, Midnight Club and I realized immediately I had to make a video about this hidden gem from the past. So today, get ready to go on a nostalgic street race. To start, let's delve into the origins of Midnight Club. Now something I didn't know growing up is Midnight Club is actually based on a real group of Japanese street racers who went under the name Hashiriyara, or Midnight Racing Team, who actually hosted illegal street races on the Bayshore route of the Shudo Expressway in Tokyo. The first game was released on PS2 and the Game Boy Advance, however, racing games for the Game Boy Advance are actually terrible and maybe that'll be its own video because seriously, they're awful. But the game was developed by Angel Studios, which is now Rockstar San Diego, and released October 26, 2000. While promoting the game, Rockstar actually got permission from the city of New York to close part of Times Square to take promo videos and pictures, and even the art on the cover. The game's soundtrack consists of house and techno music. Artists Derek May and Surgeon, as well as drum and bass band Dom and Rollin, were all contributors to the soundtrack. Terry Donovan, COO of Rockstar Games, said that their passion for creating superior music versus conforming to the industrious standard is what makes them and their music truly unique, and further stated that the music represents the dark motivation of the members of the Midnight Club. Midnight Club released to pretty decent reviews, and by the end of the year 2000, it was the fifth best-selling PS2 game. By July of 2001, it had already amassed over 1.5 million in sales. The game even won the award for Racing Game of 2000 at IGN's Best of 2000 Awards for the PS2. The game itself was pretty straightforward, the plot being you start out as a nobody just joining the club and you start with a pretty crappy car and you race your way up the ranks and advance along the way. Pretty standard for these kind of games at the time. The game only used fictional car representations of real life Japanese tuners, but that would later change. And in 2003 they came back with a sequel aptly titled Midnight Club 2. And wow, was this game quite a big step up from the first installment. With this being right at the height of Need for Speed's reign on the genre, Rockstar knew they had to make a good game if they even wanted a chance to compete. It was released on the PS2, Xbox, and Windows, which I never knew till now. Maybe I'll try to find it. Not only did it come out to more systems, it had an online multiplayer option. It was the first installment to introduce motorbikes and had three cities for you to race in. Los Angeles, Paris, and Tokyo are all the places the character can race. Their storyline is pretty much the same premise. You start out with the help of a friend who introduces you to the club and shows you the ropes. You don't start with much, but you gain more as you go. Midnight Club 2 was also an open world game, even during races, allowing you to take whatever route you desire. The main criticism of the game comes in the form of the races themselves. Themselves. They're not lap, sprint, or drag races. Since the game is open world, they're just checkpoint races, just like the features in other Rockstar games at the time. And while the game still didn't acquire rights to real cars at the time, the graphics had a major improvement, especially on the car details. The AI was also really improved, with the characters roaming around the city and actually being able to talk to the player, or think out loud, which gives the player the chance to see their motives. Each character also has their own specific stats and theme songs. The soundtrack to the game was released at E3 2003 as part of a promo for the game and features the same techno dubstep track with some occasional rap thrown in as well this time. The game came out to pretty good reviews with an average across the board being around an 8 out of 10. In 2005 though, Rockstar dropped the biggest game from this franchise, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. The dub comes from the collab the game had with Dub Magazine. Not only did it get a fancy collaboration, but it finally got the licenses to real cars. There are seven types of vehicles in the game, including motorcycles, that are then divided by four class rankings. It also took a note from the Need for Speed series at the time and added a lot more customization options. And not only that, it even had a create your own race option where you could create your own track. The game also included a huge online feature for the time, with the club feature being added. The player starts out in San Diego and goes through the typical racing game challenges before moving on to Atlanta and finally Detroit. According to the developer Rockstar San Diego, the three cities present in the initial 2005 release of the game were chosen due to their significance to the game's automotive and racing 
racing themes. Atlanta was chosen for its pioneering of automobile customization, Detroit due to its status of the birthplace of the US automobile industry, and San Diego for its influence on the development of street racing culture. And finally, Rockstar finished off with Midnight Club Los Angeles. The game came with a lot of hype as Rockstar promised that even though the game would only had one map, it would be larger than the size of all three maps from the previous game combined. It also promised to bring a lot more, with there being over 10 types of races, including series races, tournaments, pink slip races, and freeway races. Each race has four difficulties the player can choose from, with the reward being greater the harder the race is. The game also introduced a 24 hour day to night cycle which impacted the amount of traffic on the road. They also added cops in the game again, but they're not specific to races anymore, they just roam throughout the world and have AI that recognizes when the player breaks the law. The game was released for the PS3 and Xbox 360, and PSP, but who cares let's be honest. Right during the time when there was a war against loading screens, remember that? So Rockstar promised that any waiting time in the game would take less than 10 seconds. There's also 60 collectibles for the 100 percenters to collect that look like yellow barrels with the Rockstar logo on them. For every 10 barrels the player collects, a special modifier will be unlocked. The game also brought back its multiplayer modes pretty hard, with races being able to hold 16 people. They added two new modes, Keep Away, which is a capture the flag style minigame, as well as Stockpile, where teams compete to collect the most flags within a time limit. Rockstar also added the race editor again, which allows players to make tracks for other people to play online. The plot was actually pretty simplistic compared to the other games, probably due to the sheer amount of work they did making the maps and the AI. The player, that's literally what you're called in the game, moves to LA from the east coast. He meets Carol who is the person that tells you what to do basically, and all you do is race to gain reputation and become champ of the city within each car class. The game did have some DLC after its release though, with one being called the South Central Pack, which added a whole new part of the map that was about a third of the size of the original map. The game actually came out to really good reviews, with the average being about an 8 out of 10 for both PlayStation and Xbox. Most critics praised the detail the game had when it came to depicting Los Angeles. They came out with the complete edition a year later which included all the DLC that had already been released. But this was the last installment in the franchise and we never saw another game, even with this one arguably garnering the most love. Not even any new teasers or leaks, it seems Rockstar has definitely run its course with the series. However, racing games have only gotten more popular since games like Forza have come out. So who knows, maybe we'll see a new Midnight Club one day. But I appreciate you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a video in the works that's not a look back, but similar-ish style. It'll be a more long form video and more in depth on a certain topic, but you'll just have to wait and see. Thank you all so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you feel inclined so, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.